Can I call in Deputy Martin Kenny? Uh, you have total, your, your party is a total of 15 months. Thank you, Lester. I'll be sharing with my two colleagues. Uh, first of all, I want to say that we'll be supporting the motion here this evening, put forward by Fianna Fáil in regard to the father crisis. This father crisis has been going on for a very long time, and maybe at the outset I should uh, move our, mo our amendment. No, not yet. That's not necessary, OK? Uh, the, the, um, the issue was first raised, I remember I raised this issue with the Minister back, I think it was in October of last year, that there was a father crisis looming in the North West. And the Minister at that time had a very... Um, bland attitude to it that basically there wasn't a crisis, there was plenty of fodder in the country while some farmers may be short they can get fodder from their neighbours. And you know there was a certain truth in that in some cases. But the reality that I seen then, and it went right back to, I'm sure the Minister will remember, 12 months before I raised the possibility of a potential crisis coming in the winter of 2016-2017, where I could see that farmers in the North West were also very short of fodder. However, they were lucky that year that the spring came Midland and they got through it. And that's, I suppose, the, the very essence of all of this, is that, that farmers have to depend on the weather, and we know that. We know that. And I, and I joked with the Minister earlier on out in the canteen, you know, that it, it wasn't his fault that the grass didn't grow. But it was certainly his fault, and certainly the government's fault, to not make provision for the possibility of that happening. And that's the issue that we raised here. And the Minister at the committee last week said to us that it would not be appropriate to import father a couple of months ago. Nobody asked anyone to import father a couple of months ago. Chagas was going round the country and I was at the meetings with the IFA in Drumshambo and County Leitrim where Chagas stood up back last November I think it was, advising farmers that what they needed to do was feed more concentrates to spread out and stretch out the silage they had got. And that was the consistent message that they gave. And later on, about two months after that, just after Christmas, Chagas was telling us that farmers were now at a stage where it was reaching a crisis and where they had no money for to buy more concentrates. And they were saying something is going to have to happen here very, very quickly. That's what they were saying. Now, there needs to be some connection between the advice that Chagas has given and the action the Minister has taken. But there wasn't. What the Minister done instead of taking the advice of Chagas and stepping in and assisting with the provision of concentrates is he, pro he provided a scheme for to move further from other parts of the country, which wasn't what the experts were advising to be done. I think that's an important point. The Minister at all stages told me, and, and he showed me himself, that Dundee was the answer, that there was plenty of fodder for sale on Dundee. We all know that if you go to Dundee for an awful lot of things, you, you make the phone call and you go and you look what, you, what, you, what you're supposed to get and what's actually there is two different things. And oftentimes it isn't there when you go at all. So, you know, it, it was a, a, a very, very strange way of dealing with this. The other point that was raised continuously was that if any farmer was really in serious crisis where they could not feed their animals, that they should contact the department and the department would step in. I know situations where farmers were at that crisis point and they went to the department. What the department told them is, we will feed the cattle for a couple of weeks until we get a test and then we'll sell them. So in other words, they were saying to the farmer, your crisis is going to be ended very quickly. We're not going to help you through this into the future. We're just going to ship off the cattle to the market. And that was not a solution, Minister. Now, the, the issue in regard to... to um, to where we go with this, you know, and, and it has been mentioned earlier on by, by Deputy Deering about Foodwise 2025 and the whole intensification, and I think a lot of this comes back to that. A lot of this comes back to the reality that, in, particularly in the south and the east of the country where there's better land, there is more and more people going into dairying, and there is more and more stock, and we're running into a problem which is putting pressure on the entire system. And we need to have a re-look at that, and I think Foodwise 2025 needs to be examined, because we need to accept that sometimes we need to look at a change in the model that we use in different places. And that needs to happen and needs to happen reasonably quickly. Now, much of what's in the, the, the motion absolutely I, I concur with and support. However, we've put an amendment down to the motion and the amendment is to look at something that can try and solve this into the future. Because when I was here and others were here last autumn, we were saying that the crisis was due to the saturated land. Farmers couldn't get their second cut of silage. And in other parts of the country, in the south of the country, where they were used to get the third cut, that definitely wasn't going to happen. But certainly up where we are, they couldn't get a second cut of silage, and some of them who did get that second cut of silage got it in October, and the quality of it was absolutely useless. And that brings me back to the point that the reason for that was because the land was so wet. And the reason why the land is so wet in many parts of the country is because there has been no effort down the years for to provide any assistance to farmers for a land drainage or reclamation programme. 
It's been years and years and years since we've seen any action taken in regard to that. And I think the opportunity is now for to do something about that. It would also assist in ensuring that the land was a bit drier for to get out slurry and for to get out fertiliser and for to get the grass to grow a little bit earlier in the spring. So that's why we put forward this amendment, which I hope will be supported by Fianna Fáil and all others in the House, that we can get a scheme in place which will help to assist farmers to drain the land when it needs to happen. Furthermore, Minister, and I, I suppose it, 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 it's really at the heart of an awful lot of this, is that the poor return farmers get for their produce is one of the problems here. You know, when a crisis comes, the farmer is not only short of father, they're also short of money. Because certainly the suckler farmers and the sheep farmers in the North West are finding it very, very difficult to make ends meet at any time. At any time. Without a crisis like this coming at them. And you know, someone once said to me that the, 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 the definition of poverty isn't that you're like in the Horn of Africa where you haven't enough to eat. But when a crisis comes, you can't cope with it. And that's the case for very, very many farmers in this situation. So I think there needs to be a recognition of that and an understanding that there has to be an emphasis put on ensuring that farmers can get a fair price for their produce because it isn't happening at present. Um, one of the points which is raised in the, in, in the motion is in regard to the, the, the payment of, of all the various schemes. And while I know particularly the, the loss scheme is due to be paid in the middle of May, I think the 15% the which is due to farmers, that's about five or 600 euros to most farmers out there. There's no reason, there's no reason why in the context of the crisis that is now that that cannot be speeded up and paid immediately. And send the farmers a cheque this week. I know somebody in the department will say it breaches some EU regulation. Well, Minister, the time has come to breach that regulation and to look for forgiveness later rather than permission now. It's time to send that money out to the farmers so that they can have a chance of being able to relieve this situation. Finally, Minister, the problem we've got here is a problem which developed because of the weather. But there was no foresight on behalf of the Minister, or behalf, particularly on behalf of the Minister in Fairness and the senior people in the department, for to do something about it. The advice in fairness, in fairness was coming from the farm organisations, the advice was coming from Chagask and from, the other, and from the people on the ground, that the situation was dire and that action needed to be taken. However, there was no action taken. It was too little, too late, Minister, to talk about importing fodder when the dairy co-ops was already starting to do it. It was clearly a mark of your failure. And I think, you know, in fairness, you need to own up to that situation and say, look, we cocked up here, but we're going to make sure we put provisions in place that that will not happen again, and we're going to do something now. By sending out the glass money to the farmers, by putting in place a scheme to ensure that there can be provision of a meal voucher going into the future, and that that's there not just this year, but every year. There needs to be a contingency plan for this situation. And finally, Minister, there needs to be an overview of where Harvest of Foodwise 2025 is going and where that's going to put us into. And stand back from the whole situation and recognise that in some cases there is an overstocking and that we need to re-examine where it's going. I'll hand over to my colleagues. Go to my Deputy Ferris. Thank you, Paula. Uh, uh, um, first of all, let's say that we're supporting the motion and supporting the amendment by Sinn Féin. Uh, in relation to a fodder crisis and ways of trying to address it um, in, a, in a constructive way. And I suppose the first thing I have to say is that we've been through all this in 2013. Those of you who were here at the House in 2013 can f well remember uh, the crisis that evolved at that point in time and the lack of preparation and preparedness by the government uh, and, and by the department and by everybody associated. And one would assume that we will learn something from that. But unfortunately, what has evolved over the last four or five months has shown that we have learned nothing. This government has learned absolutely nothing from a crisis that was, pre uh, that was they were, uh, told prior, well in advance that this was, uh, was going to happen. And we just look back uh, to the end of October and the beginning of November, and I sat here next to Deputy Kenny. And at that particular uh, occasion, he raised the issue of an imminent uh, fodder crisis, and particular in the Northwest, and how that was going to affect the small, weak family farm. Who gives a god damn about the family farm, the small family farm? Certainly the government doesn't. But we do. We do. I come from a small family farm, and that's what I'm proud of. That's proud of my roots. And the people that I stand here and my party stand here and represent is the small family farm, the backbone of this country, who have been blackguarded and neglected by the policies of successive governments who didn't give a goddamn about whether they survived. It suits them that they're gone off the face of the earth. 
And that is what is happening here as well. Who has been hit hardest here? It's not the big, big farmers out there. They have plenty of uh, adequate uh, father and so forth. It's the small, medium family farm. They're the ones who have been hit, and they're the ones who have been hurt most. And I wouldn't mind, but we knew about it. We were told about it in here. We argued it. Uh, you, you relied on your report from Tagus. We came back in January, and same, the same situation. And now we have a situation where people who were in a position to leave their cattle out last week have them back in again because of the, of, of, the, of, the, of the weather over the last number of days. And again, where has been hit the hardest? The west of Ireland has been hit the hardest, the northwest of Ireland, and the, the small family farm has been hit the hardest. And what, we, what, what can we learn from it here today? We can, you can, you, you, as true as day follows night, there is no first cut of silage going to happen until mid to late June. You're down a cut of silage. You're down a cut of silage from last year because cattle have been in in October. Uh, and heavy cattle in in October, uh, the problems with their hoofs, the problems with trying to associate, get feeding for them and so forth, the problems that the small farmer had to do to sell off his cattle at a loss, sell off his cattle at a loss because he couldn't afford or didn't have the feeding to, to, to sustain them. So, uh, you know, uh, you can gloss it up any way you like, but the goddamn policy of this government towards the weak, small, medium-sized family farm is non-existent. There is no policy to help them, none whatsoever in the world. And you can say you go on 0.5 million tons transportation costs, import transportation costs. What has that done for them? They're paying 40, 45, 50 euros a bale for silage. That's what they're paying for them. And that's, and that's what, if they can afford it. And they're borrowing money in order to do that. They have been, have been blackguarded and elected by successive governments. Uh, so I just hope and, and that the weather will do some bit of help them because if they're dependent on this government to help them, they're wasting their time. Thank you, Thank you Deputy Ferris. Deputy Stanley. Uh, thanks, Mr. Corlin. I welcome the opportunity to speak on this motion. Uh, I think that you know, we're facing what we have is a national crisis, and it has been well flagged up. Uh, it, uh, way back, indeed, you know, you had a very bad, a very bad autumn, very bad harvest, and the signs were there that it was going to be difficulty unless, unless you had an early spring, which hasn't come, and it still hasn't come. When you see in the west of Ireland being mentioned in the northwest, I can tell you that in Leash and Offaly, there's cattle still in sheds on the 17th of April. Uh, that would have been out a month ago, or six weeks ago, in normal times, and it is causing problems, causing problems for farmers in terms of the cost of feed and the availability of feed. The, um, the motion, as well as support the amendment to the motion uh, in relation to a land drainage scheme. Uh, despite the fact I know that Martin will be uh, relaying back in terms of County Leitrim and other counties like that, but in the Midlands as well, because of the torrential rain that you've had, there are issues in, rela in relation to accessibility to land and waterlogged land that can be alleviated if there was a drainage scheme in place. I think that the, um, uh, to fast forward, the 15% is outstanding on the loss payment. That would be useful. That would be one positive thing as well that the Minister might take on board to do that. And Minister, can you say this, in relation to food wise and Harvest 2020, we all want to see you know, a good, vibrant, strong agricultural sector. And we support that at this side of the House. And I certainly support it as a TD in rural constituency. But we do have to have a reality check. A lot of them down Norway are dependent on tree cuts of silage. There was no tree cuts of silage last year. They're heavy stocking. They've been encouraged to borrow more and more, to increase the herds more and more. Some of the herds have doubled and quadrupled, particularly in dairy. And the problem is, is that when something like this happens, you know, the pressure that's on the system, if everything's going well and you're getting the three cuts of silage or two very good cuts, which hasn't happened last year, there wasn't two very good cuts, what's happening is, is that then the system breaks down when, to, when a situation like this happens. Late, late harvest, bad autumn, and now you have a late spring. It's a double whammy. Look at stocking levels need to be looked at. And we do need to look at as well. You know, we're looking at a situation where very costly feed has been imported. You know, should we be growing more fodder beet? Should Chagas and the farm organisations and the department be encouraging to grow in a more sugar, more fodder beet? Uh, you know, a good crop and a crop that will grow in, in, in a fairly wet climate. And we've seen that indeed the last few years. I think that we need to look at other ways as well as generating incomes. And I know I'm talking about the longer term here. You need to take a look at the sugar beet industry again. And it won't alleviate the crisis here. You know, there's, it's money that will alleviate this crisis and short-term measures such as the ones outlined here tonight. But in the longer term, we need to look at diversification again. You know, the situation where, where that was just wiped away off the face of the dirt, 
the whole industry that was benefiting farmers in the Midlands, and particularly small and medium-sized farmers, that there was a cash check there in, in the month of January and February from the beet factory. It kept people afloat and into the spring. And it also took the pressure off land and helped as well in, the, in terms of the soil and improving the soil. And we just wiped that away under, under the previous government. And I would ask you in the longer term to look at that. We do bring in immediate measures. There's farmers under serious pressure. They're under real pressure at the much. moment. And it's a national Deputy crisis. Williams, please. Thank you.